be happy. The open draw, as we said, still exists. And last year, when the draw was made, Cork and Kerry people were wiping their hands with glee with the prospect of a Cork Kerry Munster football final. Down in the kingdom on the banks, they will tell you that pairing is the real Munster final. Yesterday, both Cork and Kerry were in action and taking steps towards perhaps that magical final. At Porky Cueve, a Mexican flavour on the first day of the championship. Billy Morgan chose the first round match with Waterford to blood four newcomers, the most notable of which is the new man in the goalkeeper's white jersey, O'Donovan Rossa's Kevin O'Dwyer taking over at the end of the 11-year reign of John Kieran's. One man confined to the stand was Larry Tompkins. He resumed training with Cork on Tuesday night after an operation to remove a disc from his back. But it was a day of mixed feelings for the former Kildare star. Apart from the disappointment of not playing for Cork, there was the irony of his close links with the opposition. Having coached the Waterford under-21 side for the last three years, he knew the challenge they faced. You're talking about the teams like Cork and Kerry like to have great tradition down through the years. You're talking about Waterford like trying to build, build on that uh, and trying to get that thing, uh, that system going down there. So it is quite difficult and uh, certainly for the guys that are Kind of coming up and playing at inter county level, uh, it's, it's hard because they're, they're at a different, uh, you know, club level is probably at a different level there, and the, the speed of the game is totally different, and the fitness levels are probably totally different. And you know, these are the things that you have to go down there and and and, and try to explain and train them and, and to do. And like, I think it's only really you now in the last few years that probably some of these lads have begun to understand what it takes. Colin Corkery put Cork ahead with this free in the first minute, the first of 12 points he was to notch from play and placed balls. With Danny Cullity and Liam Honahan dominating midfield exchanges, the points followed quickly, with scores like this one from Joe Kavna helping Cork into an 11 points to one half-time lead. And it could have been worse, were it not for saves like this from Tom Brennan in the Waterford goals. On the restart came the briefest of Waterford revivals, Brian Arrigan pointing this free. But whatever hopes the visitors entertained of clawing back the deficit disappeared when Don McGrath was sent off for a late tackle, the first of two Waterford players to be dismissed over the hour. Billy Morgan's side soon regained the upper hand, and this passing movement led to one of the best scores of the match, the final touch going to Colin Corkery. In the end, a facile victory for the Munster champions. Disappointment for Waterford, but an important footnote for Clare, who faced the winners in the next round. Cork manager Billy Morgan says he expects both Niall Cahillan and Teddy McCarthy to be fit for that game. And the ex-Waterford coach could be there too. I'm hoping like, that everything will go well and uh, I'll have no setbacks. And uh, the same only doing light bit of training at the moment and I hope to step it up in the next few weeks and see how it goes, but there's no certainty really. No. Final score at Porky Cueve, Cork 23 points, Waterford 9 points. Limerick footballer Donald Fitzgibbon prepares himself for a training session on Dublin's Sandy Mount Strand. A footballer from one of the so-called weaker counties, he has been doing this now for 16 years. In championship terms, Donald has no medals to show for his efforts. But as he stresses himself, when you come from one of the weaker counties, it has to be about more than winning. It's the enjoyment that you get out of it really, you know. It's meeting the lads maybe afterwards, maybe for a few drinks and just, you know, just the, the crack that's involved in it really. You've been playing for 16 years. Presumably there wouldn't be too many more years left in your, in your career. Is there anything in particular you would like before you, before you finish? Oh, it would be great to win a Munster Championship. You know, that was always something that I'd like to, love to have done. Like, you know, we got a chance there a couple of years ago, maybe against Kerry, like four years ago, when they beat us in the Munster Final by a couple of points. The following year then we ran them to three points in the semi-final. Um, you always kind of hope like this things will come right for you. Well, with little over an hour to go to the throw-in here in the shadow of the Gaelic grounds, all of Limerick will be hoping with Donald Fitzgibbon also. And strange as it may seem, one Kerry man hoping for a Limerick result here today is Ger Power, the Limerick coach. Ger, Limerick very nearly caused an upset in 1991 and 92. Is there any chance that we will actually see that upset here today? Um, I would say that the team today uh, would be changed a lot from the 91-92 team. We have a lot of young fellas on the team today. But uh, we would expect kind of a spirited uh, performance from the team. And whether where we have the fitness uh, to, to last uh, with Kerry, it has to be seen. And naturally, Kerry are going to be favourites. Now, Ogie Morn, you've had your injury worries coming into this game. But surely if Kerry are going to be a force in the championship this year, they will have to send out a convincing signal to the opposition. I think... Uh, if Kerry are to be a they should win today and uh, possibly, you know, with, with, with a bit to spare. But having said that, it's a championship game and history books is full of bigger shocks than this. 
and we'd be very cautious today and we'd be very happy to go home with a win. Well, the views of the respective team coaches there, but of course the game is won and lost down on the pitch. And on the pitch it was Limerick who drew first blood. Tom Fitzgerald slotting this one over. Unfortunately for Limerick, illusions of a strong challenge were quickly shattered. Quite simply, the two teams were in a different league. As Bingo Driscoll shows here, he shrugs off one challenge before taking his point coolly. The first quarter was Limerick's best spell of the game when they matched Kerry score for score. Two men on top of their game for Kerry, Morris Fitzgerald of Cahar Savine and Billy O'Shea from Lone Rangers. O'Shea opening his account with this point. And then the first hammer blow for Limerick. A defensive error and Bingo Driscoll picks up the loose ball. Driscoll plays it inside to that man O'Shea again. And Darren Ahern called into the squad just last Tuesday. Scores his first championship goal for Kerry. So Kerry in command at the break. And things didn't change much in the second half either. Billy O'Shea here could have had a goal but was denied agonisingly by the upright. This is a young Limerick side, and to their credit, they kept trying. Donald Mulligan's strong run here puts forward Casey's clubman, Chris McGill, through for a point. But Kerry just weren't to be held. A good run here from Glenn Flesk's Seamus Moynihan, and Morris Fitzgerald of Carsevine is set up for his first goal of the day. Out for the past nine months through injury, Fitzgerald does the donkey work for goal number two himself. Linking up here with John Crowley, Fitzgerald finishes the move to give himself a tally of two goals, ten points on the day. I'm just happy to get through now, looking forward to the next one as I say, and I think that will be four weeks' time to prepare, and after that we'll be looking forward to hopefully making back to the Munster final. Three goals, 17 points is a massive tally, but Ogie Morn sees room for improvement in Kerry. I thought we were poor enough, to be honest with you, we, were, we laboured all day at midfield and uh, I thought, you know, the score looked, looked more impressive than what it was. We got a big score at the end, 317, but for long parts of the game we didn't play well today. For Donald Fitzgibbon, there's dejection, but Donald's not for quitting. I don't know, Pascal, you know, we keep clubbing away, like, you know, we get regroup, like, for the league now and hopefully win a few matches now in the league and maybe come out of Division 4 now, hopefully next to improve the standard and get our act together for the championship maybe, you know. That's, that's all we can do, we can just plug away at it. Big wins for Kerry and Cork there, but surely we must have admiration for Donny Fitzgibbon. 16 years in senior football, his team heavily defeated, they're in Division 4 of the league, and already the man is talking about next year's championship and the beginning of the league. Uh, Tony Davis, you have to feel for a player like that. Certainly, Donald is good enough to be in any inter-county team and uh, for him to be talking about the start of the league next year when all the rest of us are looking forward to the championship, it, it, it's people like him that, uh, that keep the GA going. Colm, would you have any words of consolation for the like of Donny? You spent a long time before you ever won anything, really. Yes, it was 11 years playing with me before uh, we won our first Leicester Championship, so I can understand how he feels. But I think counties like Limerick are going to find it very difficult to improve because now they have their last game before they started the league in October. And it's teams like that that need some form of competition over the summer months when the grounds are dry and the ball is dry. It's very difficult for them, them to make improvement during the league in the winter. So I think that a restructuring of the, the fixtures is needed in order to improve Limerick's chances on other teams like them. Tony, you mentioned earlier the traditional monster final, Kerry and Cork, that people use that phrase. Is it beginning to look like it? I, I, it could look like it. Well, it's, it, the fixtures have set it up like that, but it's by no means a foregone conclusion. Cork are playing Clare in four weeks' time. Two factors I think that will help Cork. One is that we have played a game now, and I'm sure we'll have found something out about ourselves yesterday, even though I don't think we found out too much, except that we can score points. And second of all, the game is played in Porky Keeve. That might put Clare off a bit. Uh, Mark, do you smiled when I mentioned the traditional monster fight? Yeah. Yes, indeed, because I think in most uh, of the so-called weaker counties, uh, it's, it's very annoying to, to hear the Cork and the Kerry lads always talking about their traditional and the proper pairing. Uh, I agree with Tony what he was saying there, that it is going to be very difficult for Clare to win in Parkinkeeve, and for that reason, certainly Cork will be favourites uh, on that day.
Colin O'Rourke, do you see a Kerry Cork Munster final? Well, I think it's, mo it's most likely, but uh, I think Clare went down to Cork in the league and, and won down there, so uh, certainly that will give them a bit of confidence. And, and we played uh, Clare recently in a challenge match, and uh, they're going to be tough opposition. Of course, we're in the era when new teams have broken through. It has happened in the north, it has happened with Leitrim. I think it could be said of Clare that they have been a consistent team ever since the 90s started, Tony. That's correct, Michal. And as well as that, they believe in themselves. Uh, up in Navin yesterday, I don't think Offaly believed at any stage that they could actually win that game. And in fact, it was inevitable that Meath were going to come back. Clare have that belief. They have the belief that they can win. And in fact, in that league game down in Cork, uh, Clare at all stages were in touch. And in the end, they got two quick points and one the game. It was coming all the time. They always knew they were going to win that game. So words of encouragement there for the footballers of Clare who'll have to travel to Parky Cueve to take on Cork in the semi-final. Kerry, of course, will play Tipperary in the other one. Tipperary who played in last year's Monster Final. In Connacht last year as Leighton won the Connacht Championship for the first time since 1927. Well, the same championship got underway yesterday at Markovitz Park in Sligo. We had Galway coming to play against Sligo, and of course all eyes are now on the Leitrim.